If you've ever gone down the rabbit hole of ultra-lightweight Linux distributions, there's a very good chance you've stumbled across tiny core Linux and thought the same thing everyone does the first time they see it. This thing boots in seconds, uses an almost laughably small amount of RAM, runs happily on hardware that most modern operating systems wouldn't even recognize, and yet almost nobody outside niche Linux communities actually uses it as a daily desktop. That raises an obvious question. If tiny core is so fast, so efficient, and so technically impressive, why isn't it mainstream? Oh, why isn't it the default recommendation for reviving old computers? Powering modern low-end devices or even competing with lightweight distros like Lubuntu, Zubuntu, or Linux Mint XFCE? Damned. To answer that properly, we need to go much deeper than just saying it's too minimal or it's for advanced users. The real reasons are more subtle, more structural, and they reveal a lot about what most people actually want from an operating system versus what sounds good on paper. Let's start with what Tiny Core actually is because a lot of misunderstandings come from comparing it to the wrong things. Tiny Core Linux is not just a smaller Ubuntu or a stripped-down Fedora. It's built on an entirely different philosophy. The base system is incredibly small, originally around 10 to 16 megabytes depending on the edition, and even the largest Core Plus version is still tiny compared to almost anything else. The system is designed to load into RAM, stay there, and treat storage as something optional rather than essential. From the perspective of speed, this is brilliant. Once it's loaded, everything feels instant. Applications launch quickly. The system is extremely responsive, and even ancient CPUs feel surprisingly capable. On paper, this sounds like a dream. In practice, it immediately clashes with what most users expect a mainstream operating system to do. Most people don't think of their OS as something that boots loads into RAM then discards itself when powered off unless you explicitly configure persistence. They expect their system to remember everything automatically. They expect software to stay installed. They expect updates to apply in the background. They expect drivers to just work. Tiny Core doesn't default to any of that. Not because it's broken, but because it was never designed to. One of the biggest reasons Tiny Core isn't mainstream is that it demands a level of intentionality that most users simply don't want. Every decision is explicit. You choose what to load, when to load it, and whether to make it persistent. Even installing a basic desktop environment involves understanding extensions, repositories, and sometimes kernel modules. For Linux enthusiasts, this can feel empowering. For everyone else, it feels exhausting. Speed alone isn't enough to overcome friction, especially when that friction happens at the very first boot. Another major issue is expectations shaped by decades of mainstream operating systems. Windows, macOS, and popular Linux distros all train users to think in terms of installers, packages, and long-term system state. You install an application once, and it stays there. Tiny Core breaks this mental model. Extensions can be loaded on demand, loaded at boot, or not loaded at all. The system encourages you to think of software as modular, temporary, and optional. While this is elegant from an engineering perspective, it's deeply unintuitive for anyone who just wants a computer that behaves like a computer. There's also the question of defaults, which is more important than most people realize. Mainstream success in operating systems is less about raw capability and more about what happens without user intervention. Ubuntu became popular not because it was the most flexible Linux distro, but because it worked reasonably well out of the box. Tiny Core by design does almost nothing out of the box. That's not a flaw, it's the point. But the point itself limits its audience. When someone boots Tiny Core for the first time, they're greeted by a bare desktop, minimal tools, and very little guidance. There's no App Store experience like GNOME Software or KDE Discover. There's no pre-configured Office Suite, browser, or media player. Even networking might require manual configuration depending on hardware. For experienced users, this is fine. For mainstream users, it feels like something is missing, even though technically nothing is wrong. Hardware support is another big factor. TinyCore uses a minimal kernel and expects users to load drivers manually when needed. This keeps the system small and fast, but it also means that modern hardware support can be hit or miss without additional work. Wi-Fi adapters, Bluetooth devices, printers, webcams, and GPUs often require extra steps. In contrast, mainstream distros aggressively include drivers and firmware so things work automatically. Most users are willing to sacrifice some speed and disk space in exchange for not having to troubleshoot their internet connection. Then there's the software ecosystem. 
tiny core has its own repository of extensions, and while it covers a surprising amount of ground, it's nowhere near as vast or polished as the repositories for Debian, Ubuntu, or Arch-based systems. You can't just assume your favorite application will be available, or that it will be up to date, or that it will integrate smoothly. For people who live in a browser all day, this might not matter much. For creators, developers, and power users, it becomes a real limitation. Another issue is perception. Tiny Core's extreme minimalism works against it in the mainstream narrative. Too many people, Tiny sounds like limited even when that's not technically true. The idea of a 10 or 20 megabyte operating system feels almost like a novelty in a world. Or even smartphones ship with tens of gigabytes of storage. People assume that something that's small must be missing important features, security updates, or stability. Convincing them otherwise requires education, and education is a barrier to adoption. Security itself is also part of the story. Tiny Core can be very secure if configured properly, especially because its small footprint reduces attack surface. But security in the mainstream is as much about perception and tooling as it is about actual design. Users expect automatic updates, security notifications, and clear policies. Tiny Core puts that responsibility on the user. For organizations, schools, or casual users, that's a deal breaker. Another reason Tiny Core isn't mainstream is that speed alone isn't the primary bottleneck for most users anymore. On modern hardware, even bloated operating systems feel fast enough for everyday tasks. Web browsing, media consumption, and office work are dominated by the browser, it's not the OS. Whether your system uses 50 megabytes or 2 gigabytes of RAM often doesn't matter if Chrome is eating most of it anyway. Tiny Core shines on extremely low-end or old hardware, but that's a shrinking segment of the mainstream market. Even in the world of reviving old computers, Tiny Core competes with distros that strike a better balance between usability and performance. Lightweight Ubuntu flavors, AntiX, MX, Linux, and Puppy Linux all offer faster performance than mainstream distros while still feeling familiar. They include installers, persistence by default, and a more traditional desktop experience. Tiny Core, by comparison, feels like a toolkit rather than a finished product. Documentation is another subtle but important factor. Tiny Core's documentation is thorough, but assumes a certain level of background knowledge. It's written for people who are already comfortable with Linux concepts like init systems, file systems, kernel modules, and boot processes. Mainstream users rely heavily on tutorials, YouTube videos, and community forums. While Tiny Core does have a community, it's small and highly technical. It creates a feedback loop where newcomers feel out of place and the distro remains niche. There's also the question of goals. Tiny Core was never trying to be mainstream. Its creators focused on efficiency, control, and simplicity in the Unix sense, not simplicity in the user experience sense. In many ways, Tiny Core is closer to an embedded system or a base for custom environments than a consumer desktop OS. It excels when used as a foundation for specific tasks, like kiosks, appliances, recovery systems, or educational experiments. Those use cases don't generate buzz in the same way consumer desktops do. Marketing, or rather the lack of it, also matters. Mainstream distros invest heavily in branding, websites, and polished visuals. Tiny Core's presentation is functional and understated. Ow. It doesn't try to sell itself as the future of computing. It doesn't chase trends. That honesty is admirable, but it also means fewer people ever hear about it in the first place. Another often overlooked factor is maintenance burden. Because Tiny Core is so minimal, users are responsible for building up their system over time. That means more manual updates, more manual configuration, and more opportunities to break things if you're not careful. For hobbyists, this can be fun. For people who just want a reliable daily machine, it's a liability. We also have to talk about psychology. Many users equate complexity with capability. A system that does too little at first glance can feel less powerful, even if it's technically more flexible. Tiny Core challenges that assumption, but challenging assumptions is hard. And most people don't want their operating system to challenge them at all. Another reason Tiny Core isn't mainstream is that it doesn't align well with commercial interests. There's no obvious path for vendors to preload it, no easy way to bundle it with proprietary software, no incentive for hardware manufacturers to optimize for it. Mainstream adoption often follows money, 
and TinyCore lives almost entirely outside that ecosystem. Despite all this, TinyCore's speed is real, and it's not just a party trick. It demonstrates how much overhead modern systems have accumulated and how efficient Linux can be when stripped to its essentials. But that efficiency comes at the cost of comfort, familiarity, and convenience. For most users, those trade-offs aren't worth it. So if TinyCore is so fast, why isn't it mainstream? Because mainstream computing isn't about being fast at all costs. It's about being predictable, comfortable, and low friction. The tiny Core asks users to think, choose, and understand. That's its strength, but it's also the reason it remains a niche tool rather than a household name. And maybe that's exactly where it belongs. Ouch. Not every brilliant piece of software needs to be mainstream to be valuable. Tiny Core exists as a reminder of what's possible a kind of reference point that shows just how lean an operating system can be. It serves developers, tinkerers, educators, and enthusiasts who value control over convenience. In a world increasingly dominated by heavyweight software stacks and abstracted systems, Tiny Core is almost a philosophical statement. In the end, the question isn't really why Tiny Core isn't mainstream. The real question is why we assume that speed and efficiency alone should lead to mainstream success. Tiny Core proves that they're only part of the equation. The rest is human behavior, expectations, and the quiet desire for things to just work. Even if they're not perfect, not minimal, and definitely not tiny.